On April 6, 1974, ABBA, a Swedish musical group, released their song Waterloo, which became a global hit. Sweden was not even a member of the European Union yet. Another famous export of this country is Swedish design, which utilizes lines to produce function over superfluous representation, incorporating traditional crafts to deliver some of the best products the world has seen. Case in point, IKEA. The worldwide reception of Swedish brands gives you an understanding of the standard of Swedish production and how much effort enters into ensuring high quality is maintained. This standard reflects in almost every other aspect of the Swedish community, which is why Sweden occupies her seat in the congregation of world-leading countries. We will look at how Sweden has achieved and maintained this incredible feat over the past 50 plus years, weighing her average wealth, innovations and general improvement, seeing how all of these have elevated Sweden in the rank of nations. The beginning of Sweden's economic rise is the foundation of its success. Sweden operates a mixed economy. A significant part of this economy results from privately owned companies, which are market-oriented, leading to high levels of competition. The other part of this economy is from the government holding a quarter of the national wealth. The government provides complete welfare packages that cater to almost every section of the populace, combining this with technology-dependent capitalism, which focuses on delivering tools for better living. Sweden implemented the perfect formula. Sweden's economy was primarily based on agriculture, and poverty was rampant, even though Sweden had abundant natural resources, such as forests and ores. But, even though entrepreneurship was an established concept in Sweden, it needed to live up to its potential. Because of prohibition and regulations in the mid-1750s on economic activities, this restrictive system was known as the Guild System, upheld rules that did not allow free entrepreneurship. The liberal reform of 1846 ended that guild system. It was all working towards a better Sweden. As soon as the guild system ended, the industrial revolution began, and it started with what was on the ground, agriculture. This combo ensured the environment was suitable for economic growth. However, Sweden slowly picked up during an era of industrialization to their advantage. Europe needed products because of the economic development which was already sweeping the globe. Swedish products, high quality, meeting standards and needs, were just what Europe needed. The free trade movement allowed Sweden to export products such as iron ore, copper and timber to countries that needed them. The second, process-focused industrial revolution was happening in cities, and more knowledge-driven industries were springing up. All these were driving exportation through the roof. Entrepreneurship only got bigger with these advancements and the development of a new type of enterprise. The joint stock company was a vital factor that birthed the formation of large private corporations, including L.M. Ericsson, Alpha Laval, Aga, Agtai Bolliget Gas Accumulator, Dyna Noble, and ABSKF, Swedish Ball Bearing Factory. The 1980s and 1990s were necessary for peak innovation in Sweden's history. Sweden had an economic foundation that had potential. Young industries were on the rise. The political foundations had to be established so that these new enterprises would be safe in infancy. They included deregulation, lowering of trade barriers, comprehensive tax reform, pension reform, reduced government expenditure, and a tighter fiscal policy framework with a surplus target. Hence, high research and development investments that encouraged entrepreneurs had to be implemented. Sweden already had many water bodies, such as rivers and waterfalls. These natural resources became hydroelectric power, making electricity an available and affordable amenity. Cheap electricity was wise on the part of the government since it allowed the developing companies to access the lifeblood of the new industrial revolution, which was electricity. Because political foundations made the grounds extremely fertile by causing the government to invest mainly in Swedish infrastructure, 
or financed by foreign capital. The new companies and entrepreneurs could thrive, so innovation sprang forth and businesses had no excuse but to produce the best they could. Swedish companies and their well-known innovations. Spotify, the music streaming service. Asa Abloy, the key card lock. Ericsson, telecommunications. Hens and Moritz, more popularly known as H&M, is famous for its minimalist yet relaxed fashion style. IKEA, home furnishings. Volvo and their estate cars. Many other Swedish companies keep making waves, which is applaudable considering Sweden's size. Innovative ideas have made Sweden strong in public finances internationally and ensured political and social security. The government of Sweden make necessary efforts to accumulate these creative mindsets at the grassroots. Sweden achieves this by investing more than 3% of its growth domestic product, GDP, in research and development. The 1842 educational reform was a foundation that ensured these investments were well spent because Swedes became very educated. Hence, the people became thinkers. Some agencies the Swedish government put into place to promote innovative ideas are Vinova is a government-run agency that promotes and funds research in almost any field, including health, transportation, industrial material and technology. The Knowledge Foundation, K.K. Stiffelson, also funds research and competence development to strengthen competitiveness at the university level. The Swedish Agency for Economic and Regional Growth, Tilvikstverget, also encourages competition and facilitates entrepreneurship. The agencies are innovative themselves, courtesy of the government of Sweden. The result of a tremendous economic and political foundation aiding entrepreneurship and encouraging innovation is the creation of wealth. Every nation seeks ways to generate wealth and reduce the national debt to make citizens live well. It is a fact that most countries have found it extremely difficult to achieve this goal despite abundant resources. Sweden's goal from the beginning is the same as other countries. Various efforts have been made to improve the nation's average wealth. Average wealth is the result of dividing the total collection of wealth by the number of adult humans present in that location. Even though it is well known that money cannot buy happiness, it does allow people to pursue that satisfaction. Measuring Sweden's average wealth is to know how much the average Swede lives on. What does this mean exactly? The average household disposable income is the level of financial freedom a home can expect. Disposable income is the sum of money, shares or assets such as real estate holdings, vehicles and consumer durables. Not many nations can boast of financial freedom for their citizens. Even the most seemingly successful countries will find it hard to openly admit that their citizens are debt-free and enjoy the unobstructed cash flow. Global Data ranked the top 10 countries with the highest average household income in the world. They are Singapore, Iceland, Norway, Sweden, Ireland, Luxembourg, Belgium, the United States, Cyprus and Australia. Here in Sweden, the average household net disposable income per capita is 349,252 Swedish kroner, $33,730. Above the Organisation for Economic Cooperation and Development, OECD, average of 315,704 Swedish kroner, $30,490. Sweden had an average household income of $74,274 in 2021. This followed steady progress from 2010 of a total percentage every year. 2021 was 1.6% more than the previous year. The accumulative increase in the past 10 years is 31.3%. In 2022, the minimum wage in Sweden is one of the highest minimum wages in the European Union, about $1,500 to $2,000 per month. 
there were rising employment rates and wage growth, which was revealed by increased consumption expenditure. As mentioned before, an apparent primary reason for this high average wealth is the rate of employment. 75% of Swedes between the age of 15 and 64 have paid jobs, ensuring 486,862 Swedish krona, $47,020 on average, which is less than the OECD of 508,761 Swedish krona. $49,165. A culture of working hard is encouraged here in Sweden. Even the unemployed 1% are actively searching for jobs. The Swedish government, understanding the psychological effects of joblessness and job loss, maintains a customized service system for people who have lost their employment. To provide more jobs, the Swedish leadership has always seen innovation as a critical driver of economic development. Education is the bedrock of any civilization, providing enlightenment and innovation, which allows a contribution to society. In Sweden, 84% of people aged 15 to 84 have completed upper secondary education. A highly educated labor force becomes informed voters, demanding good leadership. This is apparent here, as 87% of citizens turn out during the political process of elections. As a result of the citizens' participation in determining the country's future, government parastatals such as the local governments and Arbetsförmedlingen, Swedish Public Employment Service, have become more effective in providing further education through job talk for the unemployed. JobTalk also has provisions for people who have social challenges such as drug abuse. Their enrolment in JobTalk will help them improve significantly and facilitate their employment. According to statistics, just in Stockholm alone, half of JobTalk's registered clients get jobs or education every year. Sweden cares for its citizens, which it has always believed in and worked towards. And because of that focus, Sweden has become ranked as a country with the best quality of life. If you like this kind of content, please give a thumbs up and make sure that you are subscribed to our channel. Got ideas or suggestions for our new videos? Please share them in the comments. See you next time.